This is the uh, second section of the further kinematics chapter and uh, now we're going to be applying vectors to projectiles so you'll remember projectiles uh, we used x and y before and a projectile has this type of motion so motion in in two dimensions so now we are going to be using the uh, the unit vectors i and j and using vectors to describe the position uh, remember what we said before about sometimes columns are easier to, to work with remember this here uh, initial position plus displacement gives you final uh, position and this is where there is no acceleration so that's ideal for using for the this component of the um, movement of the projectile because remember that moves with constant velocity that way now the only thing we're adding here is gravity remember gravity always points down a and we take that as 9.8 now if we're going to write that as a vector um, we can either write it as 9 point or if we're taking upwards well it'd be negative 9.8 j like this or you could write it as 0 negative 9.8 so we need to include gravity and gravity can either be written in this ij form which would be that or as a column vector which would be that because remember j points up gravity points down so a ball is struck uh, by a racket from a point A which has position vector 20J and that's on the diagram here yeah so let's just mark on our, our I and J the directions of those so I can be that way J of course it's a unit vector but I'm just showing a the direction there immediately after being struck the ball has a velocity right so initial velocity here where i and j are vectors horizontally and vertically respectively which is what we expect um, after being struck the the ball travels freely under gravity so we are going to have our acceleration which is gravity uh, going down here so remember we can write that as minus 9.8 j or uh, as a column 0 negative 9.8 um, until it strikes the ground at point B. So part A, find the speed of the ball at uh, 1.5 seconds after being struck. So this is um, SUVAT again, constant acceleration, and that's um, gravity. So S, U, V, A, and T. So if we're take, well, we don't need to worry about uh, which direction we're taking as positive because we've been told in a question which direction is positive and we're writing in terms of i and j so acceleration is going to be nine minus nine point eight j now I'm, I'm writing it as i and j but i may use um, column vectors to do my working uh, time 1.5 seconds uh, we know the initial velocity which is 5i plus 8j and we want to find the speed after 1.5 seconds. So we're trying to find V. So like all of these here, apart from times, are vectors. So if we've got uh, U, V, A, and T, we've got V equals U plus A, T. It seems to come up a lot in these vectors questions. V equals U plus A, T, and S equals U, T plus half A, T squared. The two that I've written over here, you seem to use a lot in these these uh, vector questions not always but they they seem to be common ones right so let's underline these I'm now going to work in columns so V is what we want to find so let's just use the letters X and Y for that U is 5 and 8 5 8 plus a t so t is 1.5 and we're times that by a which is negative 9.8 okay what we need to do is multiply that out and we've got x and y so you've got 15 plus 1.5 times oh sorry 5 plus 1.5 times 0 which is just 5 
and then the bottom bit is going to be 8 plus 1.5 times negative 9.8 let's get on the right mode on the calculator so 8 plus 1.5 times negative 9.8 and I get negative 6.7 So I have the velocity, which is 5i minus 6.7j, but the question wants the speed. So I need to do Pythagoras on that. So the speed is equal to the modulus of the velocity, which is going to be the square root of 5 squared plus negative 6.7 squared. So let's do that. So square root 5 squared plus negative 6.7 squared, and we get 8.3600. So 8.36 meters per second. In part B, it says find the expression for the position vector r of the ball relative to O at time t seconds. All right, so first of all, we need to realize that this ball doesn't start at the origin, so whatever we work out its position at as we need to add 20i to it oh sorry not 20i 20j that's where it starts yet yeah, 20 up from the origin so we need to add 20a to what we would normally do now um, we uh, need to be using t so let's write down suvat um, down here s-u-v-a-t so t needs to be in our, our expression uh, we know gravity is negative 9.8 and we know u, this is this 5i um, plus 8j. Now we could use v, um, but uh, I would probably avoid, if possible, using uh, an answer that you've worked out just in case it's wrong. So we're going to be using uh, ut plus half at squared. We could use vt minus half at squared, but that would involve using v. And if you get v wrong, then the next bit's going to be wrong. So uh, 20j initial position plus its displacement, which is basically this uh, ut plus half at squared. So now we can just plug those in and then simplify it. So 20j seeing as i'm i've got 20j let's work in i and j plus ut so that's 5i plus 8j t plus half and a which is going to be negative 9.8j t squared so the rest now is just um tidying this up so that I have uh, the i's together and the j's together. I think I'll write it down here where I've got a bit more space. So r will equal now i parts, what have I got for my i parts? 5t, well only 5t i. For the j parts I've got the 20j um, plus the 8tj uh, minus the half 9.8, so minus the uh, 4.9t squared j. So that's all my, my j bits together. So before we continue, let me just highlight answers. So this is part A, part B, I would probably use my the expression in that form because I think that might be useful for the next bit. And now part C, and part C, um, it's asking us to determine the distance from O to B. Now what's special about um, this point B. Well, at this point B here, the um, J part 
of the ball is going to be zero. That means that this part, the 20 plus 8t minus 4.9t squared equals zero. All right, so that looks like a quadratic, um, and we can use that to find the time um, that it gets down there, and then use the time to work out the distance. You'll see that in a minute. So let's write this as 4.9 t squared. Um, just swap the signs around, don't need to really. Minus 8 t minus 20 equals zero. So if I solve that, I'm guessing we're going to get two values of t. So I'm just going to change the mode on my calculator because I'm not going to try and use the quadratic equation at this stage. My calculator do, do it for me. So 4.9, uh, negative 8, negative 20. Right, so I get literally 3, 2.995322. So let's write this down at 2.9. Nine nine five three two blah and the other value is negative so we ignore that. I'll write it down. And obviously time can't be negative, so we'll just put a big red cross next to that. So it's only the positive one we're interested in. So now that we know the time at which it gets to this point. Now remember the horizontal, um, we want to find a horizontal distance. So let's look at what's going on horizontally. Now remember horizontally, the speed is constant. So you can almost like use speed, distance and time. Now, because we have the horizontal velocity here, which is five I, so every second it's going five I across. So it's going five I for this number of seconds, all we've got to do is times that by five. You don't really need an e equation, you can use a bit of common sense really that um, we're going across by five i every second for this number of seconds, 2.995. Now if I, I'll take that answer and times it by five, that gives me 14.975 uh, okay so all we've done here is done the velocity times the time to get the displacement there is no acceleration so we can just use speed distance times as I said because the speed is constant um, so 14.98 meters 14.9 eight meters then is the distance from O to B. So let's just highlight that as our, our final answer here. So you should now be able to do exercise 8B on pages 166 to 167.